Train the muscles, not the joints. All right, lots of fish there just in case. That's like a canned mackerel, you know, in case they get into a natural bodybuilding disaster. Let's go for a walk, huh? Let's go for a walk up here. Ooh, isn't that pretty, yeah? Yeah. Welcome back to Natural Land Bodybuilding. And yeah, the lighting is gonna change quite a bit here. I'm going to be walking and uh, yeah, you're gonna get some shaky footage once in a while, but it'll be worth it, all right? So basically today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about uh, rep ranges for arm training. Now, I'm gonna talk about this from a point of view of what worked for me, not necessarily what will work for you, as I always say, but I do feel that I've got a little bit of knowledge here in this department that might help you, or at least discover what it is that you need to know when it comes down to your arm training. Now, the one thing is about a lot of the videos that I make is that I'm making videos primarily, oh, the wind's coming. Oh. I'm making videos primarily to make you aware, to make you aware of what parameters to look at, what parameters to pay attention to, and what to think about when it comes down to designing your own program or finding out what works. That's the most important thing because if you don't know what to look for, or if you don't know what to pay attention to, then how can you make decisions based on your own individual experiments? So one thing I will say is that as you train, uh, you're gonna notice that you notice more. <laughs> Isn't funny, right? You notice that you notice, right? And, and that's the thing. So the rep ranges I noticed that worked the best for bicep training were around 10 reps to 30 reps. That was the main amount of repetitions that I used in my training, assuming I'm talking about isolation exercises. So for incline curls, I regularly did you know, eight reps to 10 reps, somewhere around there, eight to 12, you could really say. And then I do high rep sets, 15, 20 reps, 25 reps. But usually I was anywhere from 10 to 30 repetitions. And that's because they're isolation movements. Now, one could say that if they were doing a compound movement, that perhaps they got results or would get results from maybe a higher amount of weight, like a higher amount of intensity, maybe doing six reps, seven rep sets, I don't know, you know, doing weighted chins with reverse grip, whatever. I'm not saying I did that, but that might be something you discover. But for the most part with arms, it was around 10 to, 12, 10 to 30 reps. Now, again, you gotta apply this experiment to yourself, but that's what I did. Now, the other thing is, I noticed that depending on the form I was using, uh, that would dictate what type of repetitions I should be doing, right? Just like I talked about in a few videos ago was sometimes I cannot hit a certain area like the bicep brachii with certain exercises if I'm going into the 10 rep range. So that mandates or makes it mandatory for me to do a 25 rep set or a 30 rep set. So uh, concentration curls would be one of those things or maybe they'd be barbell curls with constant tension where I don't want to bring the shoulder in. Then I would feel the need to stay with a higher amount of repetitions such as 20 to 50 in that case. But like I said, Overall, it was around 10 to 30 reps. That was really my, uh, let's just say my foundation of my bicep training. Now for tricep training, interestingly enough, just because it's still the arm, it's, it's different, right? It's, it's, uh, it's an extensor, it's not a flexor. And depending on how you're built again, you're gonna notice a deviation here, but I guarantee your bicep training may dictate different rep ranges than your tricep. And one thing I noticed about tricep training with isolations is that Normally, I would be at higher rep ranges, like, you know, 15 reps to 30 reps. In that area, I seem to get better muscular pumps from the triceps and better muscle activation. So, although during compound lifts, I may do 10 rep sets or eight rep sets or whatever, like say close grip bench, I found with the isolations, I responded better from 15 reps and above. Now, the thing is with triceps is that uh, a lot of times people go too heavy with isolations in triceps and then they end up with elbow inflammation. I mean, this is also a form thing as well as a weight thing. I noticed there were certain movements with triceps, especially with the isolation of triceps, like say overhead uh, skull crushers, right? The dumbbell skull crushers overhead. I found that with those overhead extensions that if I went you know, seven, eight rep range or whatever, all I do is inflame my elbows and get very little extra tricep development from it. So through experimentation, I found that 
not only is it important to keep your up ranges in isolations a little bit higher than you normally would with a compound, I also found that certain isolation movements demand you to use higher reps no matter what just because there seems to be an overkill where the muscles can no longer protect the joint properly and then you just get inflammation or you just tear your joint apart and you don't get any extra benefit from that so a lot of times for the most part i'll save my heavy sets like the five rep sets or seven rep sets and stuff for compound movements and i tend to be a little bit more conservative with isolations but these are the rep ranges i mostly used in order to get big arms and at my peak my arms were about 18 and three quarters with a pump so at five foot eight that's pretty good and i'm talking about at a lean body fat percentage so yeah so if you're going to tricep compound movements like close grip bench uh, you may notice that hey you could do seven or eight rep sets or whatever or maybe five rep sets depending on how you're built you may notice that you can go heavier more comfortably and still get good tricep activation uh, for my for me, for the most part though, I found that once I went into the five rep range or six rep range, it became a little bit too hard on the elbows and I noticed that I wasn't getting extra tricep development from it. I was just getting more strain. So that's why you'll see me with close grip bench even, usually stick to 10 to 20 reps, 10 to 20 reps in that area. And that's if I'm, that I would classify that as a heavier set for tricep training. And then when I'm doing bench press days, like for my chest training, then I may go heavier and do a five rep set or six rep set and just trust that I get a little bit of tricep activation from that without having to go so heavy on the tricep specific days. But yeah, those are the rep ranges I used for bicep and tricep training mainly. And I used all sorts of different exercises, whether they're stretching, contraction, constant tension, uh, like cables or free weights. So I used a variety of different movements, but for the most part, these are the rep ranges that I used. The sun is disappearing. <laughs> Hey guys, if you want to check me out on Rumble, I've got some workout vlogs on there. And somebody asked me what's the differences between my Rumble channel and my YouTube channel. Well, my YouTube channel, I can put up information videos like this. And on my Rumble channel, I can put up workout vlogs. And people that don't like workout vlogs don't have to go there. But during the workout vlog, I give you educational stuff just like I'm doing right now. But I do it with the background of me training, right? Pretty much similar, but at the same time, I don't piss off YouTube's algorithm by putting up videos too often on YouTube. Therefore, uh, you get... Uh, double for the price of one. You know what I'm saying? You're getting twice the content. So there's nothing to lose. So check me out on Rumble. Make sure also that you sign up for my newsletter. It is in the description. You can find the link there. So yeah, I hope this helps out in your training. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalgolandbodybuilding.com and thanks to the patron supporters and take care for now. Natural land.